Nuclear Half-Life A macroscopic, which means large, sample of any radioactive substance consists of a great number of nuclei. They do not all decay at the same time. The decay is random, and the decay of one nucleus has nothing to do with the decay of any other nuclei. Now, the number of decays during a specific time period okay, is proportional to the number of nuclei as well as how long of a time period you've chosen. Mathematically, I'm not sure you've all had this yet, but exponents, it's defined as an exponential decay. And that means, for example, if I have a graph like this and I start out with so many nuclei, it decays very fast in the beginning and then kind of tapers off like that. That's an exponential decay. After each specific time period, half of the nuclei decay. And it only seems to make sense to call that a half-life, okay? So the specific time period where half of the radioactive nuclei decay into something else is called that isotope's half-life. The isotopes of a specific element have very different half-lives. Some isotopes never decay and some will decay in microseconds. So just by changing the neutron number you've totally changed the nuclear properties of that element. The half-life of an isotope, let's underline half-life again, is defined as the amount of time it takes for half of the original amount of the isotope to decay. Let's take an example. We have 200 grams of an isotope and its half-life is two years. We want to find out how much is left after six years. So what we're going to do is after one half-life, after two years you're going to lose half of the 200 grams. So you'll be down to 100 grams. Okay. So you start with that for your next half-life. Two more years, which will be a total of four years from the beginning, which is two half-lives, you're down to 50 grams. I wait another two years. Now this here, this 2, 4, 6, this is cumulative. This is two years from the beginning, four years from the beginning, six years from the beginning. So now, after six years, which is three half-lives, I take this 50 grams, cut it in half, and I'm left with 25. So the answer is, after six years, three half-lives have gone by each time you cut this in half. So it went from 200 to 100 to 50 to 25, and you have 25 grams left of this radioactive isotope. And if you were to plot it on an axis where up here you started at 200 grams, it would follow an exponentially decaying curve like that. Another way of solving this and getting closer to an exponential notation is to recognize that a time interval of six years, now this is the same problem we just did, where you had a half-life of two years, six years is going to give you three half-life periods of two years each. Three times two is six. So n will be the number of half-lives, which in this case is three. x is your original sample size, how many grams of the material you started out with. And y will be what you have after three half-lives. Now, here's where we get into the math. The two, here let's look at this right here. This is the equation we'll be using. The two represents each time you have a half-life, the sample size gets cut in half. So y, which is your final amount of material, is equal to x, the original, divided by two raised to the n power. So I plug in the numbers here. I have 200 grams, two raised to the third power, which is eight, 200 divided by eight, 25 grams.